a damn fool. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Immortal Iron Fist podcast, Sons of the Dragon. And it's only the two of us today. We have our the wonderful <laughs> Rebecca Hart Hello. and myself, Carl Stout. And today we're going to go back to the old school, 1978, when I was seven years old. And I'm not going to mention Rebecca's age because that's not the lane. I was eight. I'm, I'm fine mentioning my age. <laughs> Uh, Issue 54 of Power Man and Iron Fist with a very dynamic in-your-face cover. Yep, they're fighting and their faces are in the background and that's kind of fairly unremarkable. But pretty cool action shot. Bit of a crotch shot of Iron Fist, but you know. Yes. He's got his leg up in the air, and Power Man's throwing a left hook. It's all good. And the title of the issue is called Heroes for Hire. Yay! Very important name. Name of their company. Name of a short run in the 90s mm-hmm. of the two teaming back up. Which, Very personally, I one. thought was fantastic and shouldn't have got cancelled, but hey. Hey, the co- that's what comics are. Like, they either sell, they don't sell. We, we're yep. getting used to it now. Um, remember the so, credits? I can barely read them. Ed Hannigan, writer. Lee Elias, penciler. Rob Jenny and R. Viamonte, inkers. Gene Simek, letterer. And F. Mooley, colorist. And then blah, blah, editors, editor and chief, who cares? Bob Hall and Jim Shooter. <laughs> Carl Kess. <laughs> uh, and it starts with, like, uh, Luke in action. And yeah, Luke there's is some in, uh, police guy on the floor. Thing. Oh, yeah, Luke's narrating. You can tell because it's in Luke speak. Uh, the dude in the truck had inv- invested too much time and effort in their fur hijack. So I say fur hijack. Whatever. Okay, so he's stopping a crime in an alley. That's all you need to know. Um, <laughs> Did you just ask what a fur hijack No, was? I said, is that what it says? Yeah, fur hijack. They're stealing furs. Furs yeah. and minks. Yeah, I know what they are. Other expensive like... things that people it's just, seem to care about. It's just a random thing to be stealing. It's not a bad thing to be stealing. I get it has value. It's just... I should probably say mention here now that me and Carl have just been saying how long it is since we've read this issue I think that just went over my head <laughs> like and I'm just yeah. sitting here going really first of course it makes sense within the 70s yeah it's fine um came up a lot in 70s tv shows and movies but not so much now you know, I mean because that. they're kind of bulky to steal mm-hmm. do you know what I mean it's like you can't imagine unless you have a van in which case you might well be stealing money that you'd be able to transport that many of them quickly. But whatever. So he's in the alley and he is protecting the police, I guess. Well, he's, I think he's running towards the truck. Yeah. Okay. So the and truck's driving off with the furs. Gun it, Polly. That's best right. Way he charged it like a linebacker. You got it, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's being shot at of course doesn't matter because he's Luke Uh, and then they run into Danny who just drops down and says hello gentlemen and starts beating on him oh no first the power man (laughs) buck and now this costume creep I mean to be fair he does look kind of a bit like costume creep but you know we know him and love him Uh, the, the funny thing is like a few panels into this fight he's having with these three or four hoodlums three um he's like the the commentary from luke saying danny ain't much for repartee 
but it's uh, easy to see how he got his nickname, The Living Weapon. It's like, of course, nowadays we're talking about what we think about Danny's witticisms while fighting. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and this is like one of the original comments is he's not really one for it. But I think he's always had a little bit of it. It just isn't always funny. <laughs> so Right. But I, I do like the fact that uh, Luke shoulder blocks the front end of the truck basically off its wheels. Yeah causing the burglars to hop out. And that's when we find out there's three of them and they have guns. And uh, Danny hops down from the rooftop and makes his, my name is Iron Fist, and please be careful with those guns. I'm not nearly as bulletproof as my steel skin pal as he's punching them all in the face. Yeah. <laughs> and then Luke's like going, he had them all under control in about three seconds. <laughs> Yep. And then the cavalry arrived. Now, I think Danny was the cavalry in that situation, but he means the police here to right. come and arrest them, so it's fine. Uh, and then I guess we cut back to his office, and he's talking to Jaron Hogarth. He's chewing him out. Yeah, ass. You Not haven't having slept, slept a wink in 12 hours <laughs> since then, right? Why? You got your men an unqualified success. You're yeah, congratulating it's kind of miserable. Is- because uh, nah. the policeman still up, uh, the policeman still hurt. There's still criminals out there, and he's only just made the only money he's made is the office rent. But Hogarth says no. Hero for Hire is a brilliant idea. He's got a little business card that says Luke Cage, Power Man, Hero for Hire. Um, and then he says you're going about it all wrong. You need to be a better businessman. Um, and so they, he's going to go and some of this issue is now spent with Hogarth training Luke in how to be a businessman. Meanwhile, Danny is being an idiot. (laughs) (laughs) And there's no other way to put it. Like he's, you know, the find the lady thing. So he's being conned by one of those. He's getting for an he's losing hour. money by a card shark. He loses two hundred and fifty dollars in the late seventies <laughs> watching a card shark. I mean, like, for anyone who's like in any doubt about them painting him a bit of a naive idiot where money is concerned, ta da. This is the uh, you know <laughs> <Ta-da>. <laughs> And and he just turns up and he just goes, Oh hi, I've been playing this game and they're just laughing at him, going like you're an idiot kind of thing. Um, but in a nicer way than that. That makes it sound like they're being cruel. They're not, but they are actually laughing about him. And then Danny's like going, uh, you know, like he doesn't know the value of money. So that's where we're going with that one. And then I guess we get who is kind of the baddie for this issue, but it's not really. It's just some guy in kind of an alienish outfit, but it's not well, not an alien, a welding outfit, I guess. Cross between a scuba outfit and a welding outfit, right? It looks like a bad G.I. Joe figure. <laughs> it really does. It looks like that, the underwater one. Yep. The diving, the, the frogman. Yeah, yeah, I think he had... My the, cousin that. that. Well, didn't I he have a fire it. guy also that kind of looked like that? Maybe, yeah, maybe I'm thinking about the British one. We had um, Action Man. Maybe I'm thinking about Action Man. Had, definitely had a frogman. Uh because I was very taken with all the tubes and stole it from my cousin. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's going to, he wants to use it as for bank robberies, but also gold and silver. But bank. And he's going to call himself the Incinerator. Not a, not a terrible name. Let's not mock the name too much. It's all right. It's definitely worse out there. Oh, yeah. Um, it's it's not, you know, at least it looks functional as an outfit, I guess. I guess, you know, I mean, there's worse again. We haven't seen what it can do yet. No, we we haven't. So far, which is why we can mock it a little bit. The next few activity-filled weeks, Luke Cage learns the ways and means of a... What? (laughs) The ways What's that word? A hitherto alien world with the able lawyer Jaron Hogarth as his only guide. So this is him. Be, this is like a full page spread with like a little inset panel at the bottom, and it's him going to board meetings, meeting clients. Oh, 
He's actually doing some DIY for the office and painting it as well. I'm not sure that that actually counts as training for a businessman, Jaren. But whatever. He is a hero for hire. Get him doing some of that. So, yeah, he's learning to do all the paperwork. And apparently, you know, and it actually says, you know, he's a clever guy. He likes learning things. And um, he once would have thought this was beyond him, but he's actually really enjoyed it. Um, so, so that's pretty cool. Cause that's like not what you're expecting when you first meet Luke. Mm -hmm. That, um, you know, like where the, the, on that side of the thing, Luke is the one who's going to be a good businessman. Um, we've just discovered Danny is not, um, yet. Uh, and so him and Jerry are, uh, sort of having a chat about that. And then we go back to Danny and he decides to go to Rand Meacham to speak to Joy in his fancy flares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is such a 70s outfit. It's amazing. It's like the, yes. like the wing, like wing collar jacket and uh, shirt and blue check jacket and purple furs <sighs> but anyway so he speaks to joy and they have a little chat oh, this and... is a very important important yeah, thing this is this is definitely Danny one of the ones connor was wanted us to point out i think is like, two important things that happen obviously in the in the comic joy doesn't want to kill him anymore unlike the tv show and uh she basically is saying half of this is all yours and for the most part Danny doesn't want it right now. Yeah. Because quite frankly, in his own words, this is her world. This is her office. She's comfortable with these decisions. She has a right to it. And yeah. he doesn't yet. He hasn't earned it. It's, we go it's, it's, it's quite an interesting little speech. And he made, we should point out flashback, amazing cape. Amazing. Yes. Uh, giant orange cape. Love it. So when he with some, leaves... With some gold yeah, carbuncles or whatever, holding it across his chest. It is pretty cool. So when he leaves, um, and Joy basically says to, him, says to him, I know someday you'll come back to claim what's yours, um, but I'll take good care of it. And then Ward comes in. Remember, he's older than the TV show. He's her uncle, not her brother. Uh -huh. Uh, and she tells him that Danny's just turned full control of his share to run Meacham over to her. So he and, has and given up ooh. all his money. Apart from anything she decides to give him. Um, and then we go back to a bank where they're getting a delivery of gold. And this is security is more than tight, so you automatically know what's going to happen next. <laughs> <laughs> and given that the guy's called the incinerator there's a mad flash of fire um and he burns his way through the wall suddenly their reverence is disrupted look at those big words they used back i know there. this is I'm like close. a really uh wordy this is like the third book i'm just like third word in just this book where i'm just like wow i haven't seen that word in 10 years yeah <laughs> Uh, his, the his, wall is pretty glowing, good, burning. Right? That's impossible. Astonishingly, the wall melts away, revealing dun, 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 the incinerator. What are you staring at, buffoons? Didn't anyone tell you this bank would be the first victim of the incinerator? So they try I don't shooting know why him. Human but his suit that I was mocking earlier is melting the shots, just like the yeah. human torch. Lou, tell me it ain't happening. It is, man. He's melting our rounds like the human torch. Ha, ha, ha. Give it up, boys. You had your shot. Now I'll have mine. Oh, even and better. He then melts their guns. That's the best. Yeah, melts his guns with his fingertip fire. <laughs> Holy cow! Just like I melt everything in this joint if I don't get what I want. Read me, Mr. Bank Manager. 
another old school term for just basically mm-hmm. hear me out. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's all right. Do as he says, man. Whatever he says. And as they surrender, he presses a special switch in his jacket pocket. Meanwhile, a familiar threesome commences a quiet celebration at an east side outdoor restaurant. There's that jacket again. <laughs> that blue tweed. I tell you, Danny, it still blows my mind. I mean, losing a couple bucks to Horace and the crow is one thing, but giving up a whole fortune? Danny has his reasons, Luke. Obviously, they're talking about him passing over the Rand Meacham Enterprise. Yes. Anyways, it's a perfect background for my little announcement. So he's oh. looking how to spin this angle. And but beep, then we beep, get beep. a beep from his little beeper gizmo. Wait a minute, Jaren. Our little beeper gizmo is acting up. Could be we'll have to cut this party short. That's the digital code for the Manhattan National Bank. This is the test we've been waiting for. We'd better go. We're on a retainer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, darned if I ever believed this would work. <laughs> and they take a cab. <laughs> yes, but not Moon Knights this time. That we know of. We don't actually Oh, no, we see don't know, but like, so yeah, but like, you know, but. The time, but there's a there's a big obvious time where it's clearly signposted. So, and because we didn't mention this at the beginning, Luke's business card is hero for hire. Mm-hmm. So here we have Danny asking if he can come because this is not part of Luke's operation. Yeah, and, and he gets he changed him... very quickly. Yep, they get changed. He gets changed in the back of the cab. Yeah, because Luke's already the changed. Bank. And there the incinerator stands. Oh, power man and iron fist. How'd you get here? Would you believe we took a cab? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you're going to be leaving in the rubber bag. Thanks to the incinerator. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, they and have a little bit of a fight then. So he fires as Luke as he's jumping forward. Sister, he's shooting fire. Better try to plow through, keep him from trying to, as he's cooking his chest. And Iron Fist is thinking, oh, I get it. He'll have to be a lot faster to get me, though. These burn heroes. Cage takes the blunt of the fiery blast on his previous steel-hard skin which affords Iron Fist the opportunity to attack. Hi-ya! Kick some dead in the face. However, blasted the helmet of his yeah. protector. At least I diverted his attention from Luke. Oof! These kinds of tricks won't help you clowns. And now he goes full flame as his whole body is engulfed in fire. He's mm. shooting fire now at Luke and, and Danny. Danny's basically thinking he can't get that close to him because the heat's too much. And Luke's like, you've got to use the iron fist. Nothing else will get through the heat. He's like, don't get cocky, Mr. Kung Fu. I can turn this room into a blast furnace if I have to. And he does. He cranks it up even higher. Enough. Why should I waste energy on you turkeys? I'll just burn the guards to crisps if you don't lay off. As he's now firing at the unprotected guards as they're screaming. No! This this panel is funny because the color is screwed up. And we see the top of Danny's head mm. poking above his yellow collar. And the top of his head now is bright green instead of the normal golden yellow. So Danny agrees with Luke, you're right, only the Iron Fist can take this chump down. So he charges it up and does what he does best, and actually does the ground hit, Mm -hmm. which was made so famously popular in the TV show, sending everyone off their feet, slamming to the ground, including Luke. And now he's getting up and all groggy, and he's Mm -hmm. going, let's get him, Luke. 
And he's like, being chased, I've got to get away. He's so out of it, he forgot to use his flame power, and he's heading into the ball. I hate to see him burn up all that money. That's Luke talking. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, he's stopping. And now his... Uh, Insider the, accomplice. Yeah, the, the bad guy had an inside man. And he's there going, he's an idiot. The heroes are bound to catch him in the vault, and he'll rat on me. If I don't know Rosie, though, he'll try to flame blast before he's subdued. Mr. Heller, look, I've got the crook trapped as he's slamming the vault door on the guy. There, now Roosevelt's flame burst will be contained. He and the heroes are doomed. Come on, everybody. I'll be the hero. Hold it, pal. We don't know what your part is in this. Well, who called the cops? But you're not rushing off till we get a statement. So inside the vault, our heroes are now trapped with the incinerator. He's threatening to burn up all the paper, uh, the money. And Luke's like going, it's only paper, we're calling your bluff. Uh, so the incinerator fires up and says, I'll fry the money and you. Uh, unfortunately, the incinerator overlooked uh, what Cage noticed on entering the vault, that the bank has a sprinkler system. So he gets put off this time by the sprinkler system. And then, and then Luke like launches himself at him and starts ripping his suit apart. Pulls off a hose. Yep. Two hoses and then gives Rip. him an uppercut, sending his helmet clean off. Well, that's that. You got Luke's me. shirt. Right. No, we have alone. to. We have to pause. For <laughs> note that Luke's shirt has, of course, ripped open, exposing his. Pecs. Yeah, I mean, like this happened. This is happens throughout the Luke Cage solo run, uh, and it looks like it's continuing. Does, Does a shirt yeah. ever survive a full issue? I probably, but I I remember there's a very funny one where it gets burned off. It's just like it's just any way they can get rid of it, they get rid of it. Um, <laughs> so the incinerator kind of drops. He totally in his, rats. Yeah, he totally rats out the guy. And then the vault phone rings, and Luke's like, "Oh, that must be Jared." <laughs> like, that's a big leap. Number like, but anyway, doesn't matter. It is Jared. Um, and yeah, they're very happy with him, and they're working on getting you out. <laughs> Apparently, the vault has a time lock. Uh, so they get out, and Luke's and, chatting and to Jared, and sad. Danny's sad and grumpy. And he's got his fist on his head, on his chin, on his like side of his face, and he's like, mm. and like Jaren's sort of saying, "Why are you looking so glum?" And Danny's like, "Nothing." Like, and you could, and like he, you know, he basically is kind of he's upset that those two are in business together and he isn't. He's like, "Oh, you know, kind of like because he had fun as a little hero for hire for a moment." Mm-hmm. And then dun, dun, dun. we get the surprise announcement. And Luke's like, Jaren wants you to check out our new business card. And, and uh, you know, Danny's still looking a bit grumpy. And what? says, what? Business, business card? card? And then he looks and you see a smile. And it says, Power Man, Iron Fist, Heroes for Hire. And then Jaren's number as their representative. And Danny's like, yes, I like it. Partners. So there we go. Heroes for Hire is formed officially. Get grumpy, Danny. We get terrible yeah. businessman Danny, great fighter Danny, good businessman Luke, um, Danny mending ties with Joy a little bit, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, Ward not liking cape. Danny, the dashing cape. It's actually a pretty solid issue in terms of what what happens. I mean, like rubbish uh-huh. villain, but you don't need a villain because, well, you need a villain to just be there to be beat up because they're just getting to that. This is kind of like, this is the final bit of that getting the boys together from their, in, their solo issues. Yes. You know, because Luke's now being cleared and whatever. Now we've got all the cast ready to go with the next issue. The, the, uh, the groundwork has been laid. Yes. And we next have a lot more week, to come. Or next week. Issue, rather. Chaos <laughs> at the Coliseum. Dun, dun, dun. I wonder if that is what it originally, what it ended up being called. We'll find out. I know. 
Uh, <laughs> good fun, good issue, good action. Yeah. Groundwork. I mean, it like like Important Rebecca issue. said, nothing groundbreaking. Yeah. No s- secrets were revealed that we didn't know about already, but. No, I guess we learned a little bit more about them in terms of Luke taking to business and Danny giving up the the business. Um, which is actually very sensible, you know, like, I, I joke about him being dumb with the uh, card shark, but he then makes the sensible choice, which, like, clearly I should not have the kind of money that means I can bet I can lose $250 on a street con. Correct. So, um... Which, I mean, back then, a new car was $2,000. Right. So, you know, like, put things the... <laughs> they both make good decisions. They both show that they enjoy working together they know each other's fighting styles and stuff like that so it's i like it it's a good it's a good little capsule issue where you know some important stuff happens but it's really just here we are ready to go with heroes for hire as a concept now with the two of them and i don't think we have any news about iron fist sadly um, no, he'll probably be in War of the Realms because apparently everyone in the world is going to be in War of the Realms, which is the big Thor-based event that starts in April. So look forward to seeing where he shows up there. But uh, they have pretty much said that everyone they could get in, they got in. So you know, let's just happen. hope he's a little in better than the typhoid Mary hot mess. I, I didn't even read his issue. I read the previous issues and um, decided that I probably didn't want to. I'll, I'll read it one day. But when it's on Marvel, when I've got Marvel Unlimited and it's on there. Um, but I didn't feel the need to own it. I'm not as I'm not a completist like everyone. Everyone <laughs> else. I, I'd rather only have. I don't know what like. you're talking about. Rebecca. Well, not just you. There's lots of people interested in every. I just I just sit and feed your obsession. <laughs> well, I, I got to be honest. It's it's it has spun out of control because remember for yeah. how many years Iron Fist was dead. Yeah, yeah. And so when it came back, all the comics have gone up in price. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they brought him back in Namor. Yeah. So I had those couple issues, and oh, then so a couple guest spots, and. Heroes for Hire, which I still can't say enough about that series. Mm -hmm. It's just excellent. I like it. I have fun this trip. And uh, it was pretty slow going for the Iron Fist collection. (laughs) Right. And now all of a sudden it's not everywhere, but there's a lot of people just showing up. I mean, it's not like I'm trying to find every Wolverine or Spider-Man appearance. That right. would be... Poof. That would be expensive as hell. 22 and issues know, a month. And I know people who do things like that, and I just don't know how they they can. Um, especially now, comics are just so much more expensive. And, people, and back issues don't tend to sort of dive in cost as quickly. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably the only thing we can expect to see him in for sure. Um, well, I say for sure, we have no idea if he's going to be in it, but, um, (laughs) so that's a little bit me, but, uh, I would hope we see him in it, um, Mm. and obviously we will let you know as soon as we know anything about that, I'm not sure there's anything else, uh, big on the horizon, so... So next time, unless something brand new pops up, we'll be covering issue 55. Yep. Hopefully Connor will be able to join us. Yes, I'm sure he will. He did Until want to then. today, so um, we are just covering for him a little bit uh, because he couldn't make it. But yeah, so until then, everyone, take care. Take care. Have a great one. Keep reading. Yep. Peace. Bye-bye. Iron Fist and all other characters in these comics are properties of Marvel and Disney. Any musical images we use belong to their respective copyright holders. We do this for fun, so please don't sue us. You can contact us at sonsofthedragonpodcast at gmail.com. Just send us mail, comments, thoughts, anything you want, really. It doesn't even have to be related to Iron Fist. If you don't want it read on the air, though, make sure you mention that. You can also find us on Facebook. 
the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, Sons of the Dragon. Our Twitter, at Iron Fist Podcast. Our SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash Sons of the Dragon, uh, hyphens where the spaces are. Our YouTube, Connor Carl. Just search Iron Fist Podcast and you'll find us real quick. We are also on iTunes. If you find us there, give us a review and rate us. If it's less than five stars, please say why so we can improve the show. And we're on Podcast Garden in the literature section. And last but not least, head over to our WordPress, Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Artist Podcast, WordPress.com. That's where I put all the show notes. I'd like to thank Thomas Tissot for composing the Iron Fist theme song we use at the start of our Iron Fist episodes on the podcast. I'd also like to thank Peter John Sikorsky for composing the Power Man and Iron Fist theme we use at the start of our Power Man and Iron Fist episodes. And finally, thanks to you guys for listening. Thank you.